Hi, Rap Critic here, and it's time yet again to count down the top 10 worst lyrics I've ever heard in 2014. Let's get started. I got a lot of cash. I don't mind spending it. Oh, here we go. A rapper bragging about how it's nothing for him to throw his limitless amount of money around and how he's willing to spend any amount on any girl he wants. Is we fucking when we leave the club or not? I ain't spending cash for nothing. I want to see you take it off. Wait, didn't you just say that you don't mind spending money? I mean, I just assumed that since the song is about asking a girl if she's down with all types of freaky sexual stuff, and then the first words that are spoken on the song pertain to how you don't mind spending lots of money. I mean, you gotta put two and two together. I mean, how do you expect this conversation to go? Hey baby, come roll with us. I got a lot of money I'm trying to spend. Well, could you buy me a drink? Well, not on you, you gold digger. Jeez, oh, for once, can a man throw around a bag full of $100 bills without women trying to harass him for drinks? You know, that's rude. You're rude, ma'am. I'm taking my bag of money to another strip club. When you beat the cases, turn it to a stoner child. We don't stand in line, borrow shoes, hurt your feet. Yeah, Young Thug and his gang don't stand in line to get into clubs. Mainly because their imported shoes cause foot pain. Like, he would totally be down for standing in a long line if it weren't for the fact that he forgot to buy insoles. And he says it like you're supposed to expect foreign shoes to hurt, like it's some kind of European custom. Look, young thug, I know there's a whole thing about shoe size conversion from Europe to America, but they're not that hard to figure out. Uh, like I said, shoes aren't supposed to hurt. Well, unless you're wearing high heels, but only women wear those. And I still don't know why. Oh yeah, there is that whole cross-dressing thing with Young Thug, where he wears little girls' dresses. You know, there are people who would defend cross-dressing, and, and that's all fine and good. But allow me to clarify. He wears little girls' dresses. As in, clothing for eight-year-olds. And hey, if that were honestly his life, and he brought it up in his lyrics as a way to challenge stereotypes of masculinity and stuff, like, like exploring the mentality of a person who wears girls' dresses, that could make for weird and definitely challenging material to listen to. Well, at least it might if this wasn't all obvious publicity stunts in order to get people talking about him. Because, yeah, the lyrics are not that interesting. The sixes we collect, huh. bitches we could sex. Huh. Phone still tap, so it's best to send a text. Uh, yeah, people can still track those too. In fact, in some cases, it's easier to trace messages than actual phone conversations. And there's actually some software out there that can retrieve deleted texts. So if you know your phone's already been tapped, it's Best just to not use that phone at all. Dude, I don't know that much about drug trafficking, but if you know you have a tapped phone, the last thing you want to do is send printable evidence of your interactions. Of course, this is the same guy who thought Expedia and Wikipedia were interchangeable, so he probably doesn't know that much about technology. Or drug dealing. Know the name, know the name, top dog, bitch, bitch. No cat in this, I volunteered for these hunger games. I've heard a lot about this Ab Soul guy. He's apparently a really good rapper, he's been getting a lot of buzz, and he's down with Kendrick's TDE label, and that dude knows talent, so so let me check out his most popular song, see what people are gravitating to. What's the song he's done? Uh, never mind that? Alright, let's check it out. She wanna be a righteous young rich nigga bitch, you a lesbian or a librarian, I know you got room for my dick, shh, she never- Never mind that, indeed. Yeah, yeah, it's my- I'm gonna stop you real quick, I have a little question to ask first. Um. Is Birdman still rapping in 2014? No, better question, better question. Who wants to hear Birdman rap in 2014? Yeah, yeah. it's money over everything. We motivated, flying over everything. 20 years, Birdman. You've been rapping for 20 years, and not once have I heard you spit anything more complex than what you just said. Granted, I've never heard a whole album from you before because, good lord, what person with goals and aspirations would want to? No, really, I'm gonna call it. Anyone who has willingly listened to more than one full Birdman album past the age of 14 probably doesn't have that much going on in their life. Because seriously, this is his whole rap career in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. it's money over everything. We motivated, flying over everything. That's it. Nothing else. Nothing creative, nothing funny, nothing inspiring, nothing retrospective, and usually nothing that actually rhymes. And even when you do try to use a metaphor or any semblance of wordplay, it usually fails. What up, five bags full of every president that ever died? Why the hell do you have a bag stuffed with the bodies of deceased presidents? And how did you fit Taft? Bags full of every president that ever died. Oh, I'm sorry, he was referring to money when he said that. You know, not every dead president is on U.S. currency, right? Like, not even half of them. In fact, Benjamin Franklin, the, the dude on the $100 bill, he wasn't even a president. 
But you know what? If this is what happens when you try to employ any literary technique that involves creativity, well, maybe you should just stick to pointing out the expensive things in your house. Guns in the basement, millions in the wall, GTV cases, all the malls and cigars and them new toys. There you go, nice and simple. No metaphors or creativity, that's too much work for you. Just go back to being such a blatant commercial shill, I'm surprised Adblock doesn't allow you to skip over his verses. Take her to my castle, shine her in my cap. Say your dick so little she can fit it in her ass. So? Look, I don't know about you, and maybe this because we're in the internet age where you can find anything, but in this day, the idea of a penis being able to fit inside of a butt is not really that much of a stretch. <clears throat> no pun intended. I mean, I get what you're trying to say, that he's so small you could fit him in your butt without lube or anything, but just saying by itself that your penis is so small you could have anal sex? It's just kind of underwhelming as an insult. That's like saying, You have so little money, you could fit it in your wallet! Ha ha! Showed him. Hut, hut one, hut, hut two. Big titties, big butt two. Hi, Nikki. My man fool, he just ate. I don't duck nobody but tape. Uh, that was kind of clever. Yeah, that was a setup uh, for a punchline uh, on duct tape. Uh, Really, Nikki? Did you think we needed your help with that one? Did you think that there were people out there who heard you say, I don't duck nobody but tape, and said, hold up, now wait a minute, if she says she doesn't duck from anyone, then who is this tape gentleman she makes an exception for? And besides, when it comes to your lyrics that need explaining, I can think of a few others that could be a little bit more well-suited for that. Plasma, hey Nikki, hey Nikki, asthma. Now that could use some explaining. Maybe it's time to put this pussy on your sideburns. Mashing your vagina against a specifically hairy side of someone's face could definitely use some explaining. Swallow balls, not to. And this lyric, honestly, I chalked that up to drugs, but the line about duct tape, I don't think we need help with that. Lupe Fiasco has a song called I'm scared. Lou, what the hell are you doing? Okay, I don't even speak Spanish and I'm pretty sure that doesn't make any sense. Okay, stop, stop. What is going on here? This is just bad. Unfocused, repetitive, and bad. I don't care if people try to excuse this and say it's freestyle. I've heard Lupe do better than this. KC, jo, 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 jo. What the hell are you talking about? This is random nonsense. And don't be one of those people saying, oh, it's a parody, he's making fun of how lazy rap is these days. Well, you know what? If there's one thing we should have learned from Epic Movie, it's that parody can be just as lazy too. Bad music is bad music. And if it's a parody, it's still under the same parameters as a normal song. I'm tired of people giving carte blanche to musicians writing crappy lyrics as long as they give us a knowing wink at the end. This is not a song you actually listen to for any type of enjoyment. This is a song where you go, ho ho, aren't I smart for knowing that trap rap doesn't take a lot of skill to make. And you never listen to it again. It's just bad songwriting. You wrote a bad song, Lupe. That said, I still look forward to your next album. What? Still a fan. As we keep our hands up high and scream for justice. So I'm sure we've all heard about the Michael Brown case, in which an unarmed black man was shot and killed by a police officer. And due to the fact that this has happened countless times and that this just happened to be one of the most publicized incidents, a bunch of rappers got together to make a new self-destruction, a collaboration project between a great number of rappers in order to stand in solidarity on the issue of police brutality. And they pulled out all the big names in current hip hop, like Lil Wayne. Oh, well, what about Drake? Oh, Kanye? Kendrick Lamar? Jay-Z? Well, who is on the song? What, 2 Chains? Really? Oh. Okay, what other rapper is on this song that probably shouldn't be on a song against violence? Um, The Game? Rick Ross. Really? Maybe he's trying to make up for last year. Uh, well, let me think of someone really random. P. Diddy? Oh. Well, you know, songs like this usually bring out the humanity in a person, and I can respect when someone, especially when someone as commercially viable as P. Diddy, can come away from his constant flux of ad campaigns and commercialism to talk about something serious. Yeah, come on. We 
gotta stick together. We all we got. Yeah. Police oh, taking shots and I ain't talking about Sarah. Yeah. You f***ing disgust me. Was this the time to name drop your luxury vodka drink? And yeah, sure, it's a quick line. And he says, I ain't talking about Ciroc. But no, you know the point of name dropping something is to get people thinking about it. And it's the motivation that led you to do that. And the implication that even in a song about the death of an unarmed black man with no accountability shown by the justice system, which chooses to unfairly protect men behind the badge, you think, well, hey, just as good as time as any to shout out my expensive bottle of beverages. I'm just saying, you didn't hear him in his dedication to Biggie Smalls saying, I'm so sad that my friend died as I go to the funeral in my Sean John suit available at your local retail store. Take that, take that, take that. Then maybe it was just a line for the sake of wordplay. And Ciroc just happened to be on his mind, sure. But, but with the way P. Diddy is such a marketing mogul, I wouldn't put it past him. And sure, maybe I'm overreacting a bit, but I just think when they're making this type of song, they should have told people not to talk about brand names. For at least this. Uh, because it kind of undermines the purpose. And it kind of makes it seem like you have ulterior motives. We want change in how the system works! We want revolution! <laughs> and this revolution should be brought to us by Coca-Cola! Hey, what the hell? Ooh, hey. Nobody likes you, P. Diddy! The queen of rap, playing with Queen B. Queen B. Oh. Am I tripping on this, this whole to say my name? Oh, you tripping hard as a mother Ain't nobody say your name. She's calling her the name that people have been calling Beyonce for years now, Queen B. And I find it odd that you have not had a problem with anyone else saying that until Nicki did. I mean, Kim's acting like Nicki was trying to reappropriate your title, even though no one was thinking about that title anymore but you. Now, admittedly, Nicki did have a thing about dissing you two years ago for some reason. Stupid hoe should have befriended me, then she could have probably came back. Which. Wow, talk about kicking someone when they're down. So I get why you might think she still cares, but maybe you should have responded two years ago when she did that. Or maybe you didn't, I just wasn't paying attention. Anyways, the thing that especially got my attention here was that when I looked up Lil' Kim's verse, it wasn't just her verse rapping over the beat of the original. No, the first three and a half minutes of the original Flawless remix plays first, and then is interrupted near the end. Geez, it's almost as if she knew no one would give a crap about her verse unless it came tacked onto the end of a more popular song. But hey, you know what? Lil' Kim just called Nikki out of her name, so if she's gonna do that, she must have some fire for her. So here we go. What vicious attacks do you have for Nicki Minaj? Queen of rap, fuck you outta here. Queen is back, fuck you outta here. Time to get this rap bitch up outta here. I'm all gut like this, fuck you outta here. Ooh, rhyming outta here with outta here with outta here with outta here. That'll show her who's lyrically superior. I'm so awesome, I'm so fucking awesome. These hoes wanna be me cause they know Kimmy, she flawless. If you knew you were so flawless your whole life, these wouldn't be pictures of the same person. I just had a baby about a week ago. And here she puts Nicki Minaj in her place, but wait, you just had a child? So you're a 40 year old grown woman who just went through nine months of labor and experienced the miracle of childbirth. And your first artistic endeavor was to diss Nicki Minaj? This song is slowly reflecting more poorly on your character right now. You might want to switch it up. Dig your claws in a little deeper. Get back to the point. Here, I'll help you. Nicki Minaj is a terrible person because... Dior lipstick with the mascara. Kissing myself in the rear mirror. Uh... Head game so presidential. Spit on a dick like an instrumental. I I'm sorry, were we arguing over who gave better oral sex? Because that's how her verse ends. Well, that and the obligatory. Oh. You know, in order to impress upon us that she totally gave Nicki a lyrical beatdown even though she literally said nothing about her. It's actually strange how she just sort of devolves into typical sex raps, like she was trying to aim anything she could at her, but her inability to break out of the sex vixen thing just impaired her capacity to focus on anything that wasn't relating to a man's penis. It's kinda odd that she says she spits on d like instrumentals, instead of the other way around, because on a rap disc, you're supposed to talk about how good you are at rapping, not at giving blowjobs. But hey, that's how she chose to end it, so I can only assume that was her grievance. So, so look, I'm willing to help solve this. If that's what you were concerned about, Lil' Kim, here, I'm sure we can all tacitly agree that you can have the title of Best Oral Sex Giver in Hip Hop. And Nicki Minaj will just have to settle with the title of Being Relevant. Well, that was my list. If you have your own list of bad lyrics from 2014, please feel free to post them in the comments. It's always funny to see stuff that I might have missed. Well, until next time. I'm the rap critic. You don't have to like my opinion, but I don't have to like your song.